Hey guys, Dave Sheen here from Connect. I'm very excited to be talking at our next Connect episode with Robert Libby from Canada. Um, he'll be discussing in our little interview uh, what he'll be presenting at our international virtual conference coming up on the 23rd of May. So stand by. Next, we are going to look at treatment in a supine position with a patient lying on the back and then the therapist. I've got a saddle seat, but you can sit in any chair, but it puts my posture into a better position. The trapezius and levator, we can actually treat from this side. We can also do rotation as well, which would include the sternomastoid and the scalenes. Now, what we're going to do is slowly take the patient into a side bending position so they are comfortable. The face all ideally is under, so it gives you more access around this sort of area of treatment. So from this position, take your hand over. If you've been massaging with oils and creams, then try not to contact the face. Place your finger either side of the ear and place your hand on top of the shoulder. We have three choices. Choice one is the patient elevates the shoulder. Choice two, they can side bend. Or choice three, they can bring the right ear to the right shoulder and the right shoulder to the right ear, so they can do both at the same time. So if you watch the first technique, take a small breath in, please. And then on the out breath, slowly push up on your right shoulder. So they elevate in the right upper trapezius. It will get the levator as well from this position. After 10 seconds, I will do it slightly for less time. Relax, please. Take a small breath in. And on the out breath, I can slowly use the shoulder and depress. So that could be choice one. Choice two could be that, breathe in, please. Slowly side bend the neck to the shoulder, so she's activating it. Some patients have pain in this movement, that's why we might use the shoulder. After 10 seconds, relax. Breathe in, and on the out breath, stabilize the shoulder, and then slowly side bend the neck. It is natural to me to apply a little bit of depression to the shoulder, just to stabilize it. And choice three, breathe in please. Right, right ear to shoulder and shoulder to ear. So she's activating both components, 20%, not 80. So many patients try to, to force the movement. Remember why they come to see you is because they're probably in pain. After 10 seconds, relax, breathe in. And on the out breath, I can slowly depress the shoulder and side bend. If you watch this next technique, if you ask the patient to slowly push up on the right shoulder, so she's activating the upper trapezius. After 10 seconds, if you ask the patient to take a breath in and the right hand slowly reaches down towards the knee, then she is activating the lower trapezius muscle and the process now tells the upper trapezius to relax through reciprocal inhibition. So this would be the second method of MET and relax there. So that would be an RI technique. To do the levator, what we're going to do is we need to rotate and then slowly bring the chin to the chest. And what I'm going to ask my patient to do initially is to, from this position, I can come under and just slowly ask them to push the head back to the right. So she is pushing the head and back to the right, so activating the levator scapulae. After 10 seconds, relax please. So we've now got a window of opportunity where we can encourage lengthen in. So there's no rush, we have 25 seconds to do this. The way I do this, I would normally cradle under the occiput, hand on the top of the shoulder, and I can, if I needed to, slowly use my abdomen and just take my patient while stand in into the flex position here. If you find it's uncomfortable to place your abdomen on your area then just use your hand. Remember the weight of the head is around 12 pounds so it's quite heavy. That's why sometimes I like to rest it here. To get the patient to slowly push the head back please. So she's pushing back. Remember most muscle energy techniques are performed three times. Relax please, take a breath and as I breathe out if this is the third and final time, I would hold this new position for at least 25 seconds for the body to remember the position. After 25 seconds, I'm going to slowly bring my head back down, the head I meant, and then she can just relax for a second. Last one is rotation, so we are going to rotate. You can see that this SCM here is pretty active, even though I'm doing the movement passively here. I'm going to get my patient, take a breath in please, and slowly turn your neck 
to your right just by rotating into my finger. It's actually contracting the left SCM is what we are doing, not the right side. And after 10 seconds, take a breath in. And as I breathe out, my fingers are either side of the ear, I'm gonna slowly rotate my patient until we feel a bind. Hold them for a few seconds. If there's no set time to hold, take a small breath in, please. Look at my finger, I just tap. So they rotate into my finger for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, relax, please. Breathe in. And as I breathe out, I'm going to rotate into further left rotation. If this was the third time, I would hold, try and relax, let go. You can see that's it. So once I hold for 25 seconds, I would then bring the back off position. So that treatment was for the upper trapezius, the levator scapulae, and actually more for the left SEM rather than the right SEM. And then I would then repeat by going to the opposite side. Hey everybody, this is Dave Sheehan from Connect. This episode, we've got Robert Libby from Vancouver, Canada. Say good day, Robert. Good day. How's it going, mate? <laughs> so um, in this episode, we're, we're just going to talk um, very briefly about who you are, because uh, it's great to have you on the scene down here in Australia. Um, and you are presenting at our International Virtual Congress uh, Conference, um, which is on the 23rd of May. There it is, all is there. Um, and Robert's kind of interesting because he doesn't, he doesn't so much deal directly with muscles. Uh, he deals a lot with ligaments. So he's got a bunch of techniques, which uh, the acronym is LAST, which is uh, Ligamentous Articular Strain Techniques. So um, Robert, just a little bit of background. You've been around for quite a number of years in Canada as both a therapist and instructor, and I think also an author of a book. Um, do you want to give the folks at home just a little bit of background on yourself? There it is. Good plug. Off you go. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, so I am uh, a registered massage therapist practicing in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, I graduated in 1994, so just a few years ago. Um, my practice has mainly been uh, manual orthopedic massage therapy techniques. Um, and I've been practicing for, for about 26 years. So uh, I started teaching in 2000 and, uh, 2001, was teaching at the college level. Um, at around you know that time, I had, uh, I'd had a number of patients that I wasn't having a lot of success with, with their frozen shoulders or their joint instabilities or their, uh, you know, their sort of muscular protective mechanisms that happen after sort of uh, uh, ankle sprains and, and joint dislocations or separations, things like that. So I went on a journey. I went on a search for um, any type of post grad course or education that I could uh, that I could gather that would provide me maybe some nuggets of uh, information about how to better treat my patients, improve their quality of life. Um, one thing led to another. I discovered Andrew Taylor Steele, who was sort of the godfather of osteopathy in the United States. He had um, documented uh, and taught very briefly ligamentous articular strain technique to a small group of osteopathic students. Uh, that technique was then sort of taken on by William Sutherland, who applied to the cranial uh, system. And then from there, um, I think the Lippincotts were taught the technique and they advanced it. It then went on to the Dallas Osteopathic Study Group, who published a book in 2001. And then I took it and applied it and updated it with uh, today's evidence-informed research and science, applying the biopsychosocial perspective to it, and have been teaching it ever since 2010. Uh, so, uh, so that's ligamentous articular strain technique, and that was sort of my my uh, my journey of of being more interested in the ligamentous capsular uh, tissues uh, than the muscle tissues. Um, that's, not, that's not to say that I'm not interested in it. I'm very interested in it. Um, to, the, to, the, to the fact that um, I had written a proposal to teach at the International Fascial Research Congress in uh, Berlin in 2018. So uh, it's, it's a huge passion of mine, the, the fascia, talking with Robert Schleip and the fascia guys and incorporating, uh, you know, capsular ligamentous uh, information and, and research into practice. So, so that's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's in a nutshell. 
So, Robert, um, your topic at the conference for this year is ligamentous injuries, what you need to know to help your patients. So did you want to sort of give everyone a bit of a descriptor on uh, what you'll be presenting on at the conference? Sure. Uh, so this is going to be a one-hour talk, um, and I'm going to give you guys just a ton of information that you can apply to your patients, some knowledge uh, that may be some solutions or some answers to some questions that you might be having with your patients. If you haven't, um, if you've got some patients that you haven't been seeing an improvement in quality of life or functions or your patient outcomes just aren't what you were looking for, um, these the, this one hour talk might provide some answers for you. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about ligaments. We're going to talk about what they're made of, um, how they get injured. We're going to talk about sort of the path of how they get injured. We're going to look at uh, stress relaxation, hysteresis. Those are sort of three ways that ligaments become injured and we uh, take them through a failure point uh, structurally. Then we're going to look at uh, biopsychosocial implications of ligamentous injuries, not just ligamentous injuries, but just injuries in general. We're going to look at uh, biological implications of it, how that affects a patient's psychology and also their social interactions. Uh, from there, we're going to talk about um, some new information that is in the book, actually. So this was a project that I incorporated into the book where, you know, I had a question about, um, you know, we have these mechanoreceptors that relay balance, coordination, kinesthetic awareness uh, from our peripheral joint tissues, from all the tissues in our body, essentially, and they relay all that information to our central nervous system. And I was thinking, how does it get from the periphery to the central nervous system. And you know, we get taught in school, we get taught about dermatomes. Uh, dermatomes is uh, an area of skin that is innervated by a peripheral nerve that comes from a specific nerve root or dorsal root ganglion uh, or, or nerve roots. We have myotomes, which are uh, muscles uh, that are innervated by a specific peripheral nerve that then comes from a specific uh, uh, dorsal root ganglions or nerve roots. But what about ligaments and joint capsules? How are they innervated? So I went through and I grabbed as much research as I could uh, from all various different sources, and I was able to actually document all of the peripheral neurological innervations for the capsule ligamentous tissues for almost all of the joints of the body. So that is what we're going to talk about um, uh, for that section. Ligaments and joint capsules also have documented uh, pain referral patterns that are reproducible. So this is actually research from George Hackett in the 19, 1920s, 1930s. It started with him and the investigation into prolotherapy and how to create stability in joints that have been uh, you know, dislocated or separated. And then that research has actually continued up until today. Currently, this research is still being uh, documented. So we talk about pain referral patterns for the various areas of the body. We're going to talk about Iron Man. Uh, we're going to talk about armoring that happens. So when we have a ligamentous injury, what happens is we have neuroplastic messaging that occurs at various levels that actually causes the body to go into a sympathetic nervous system protected mechanism. Um, and these would be your patients where, you know, maybe a week after an ankle injury, their their uh, their gas rocks or soleus, their you know anterior posterior compartment is still kind of really tight. But then maybe like five years later, they still have really hypertoned, really protected and guarded, armored, you know, lower extremities. And they're having difficulties stretching it out. They're having difficulties advancing forwards with their strength and conditioning coaches. So we're going to talk a little bit about armoring and how that uh, comes into play with ligamentous joint capsule injuries and what we can do as therapists. We're going to talk about time, uh, healing times for these injuries. Because we all got taught in school, and we, they still teach it in school, uh, that you know we have acute, subacute, and chronic. And acute, we learned for an injury, is about two weeks. Subacute can be anywhere between four and six weeks, and then chronic is about six weeks afterwards. Well, I'm going to present some research that's going to blow your mind. Just a little, a little morsel, tidbit of information for you guys right now. I want you to think of the acute stage of a ligamentous injury as being a year, a year long acute stage. And that's documented research. So that's not myth and trend or, you know, hypothesis or just anecdotal evidence from my own practice. That is documented, printed, published research. Uh, so we're going to talk about timelines. 
Then we're going to talk about what we as manual therapists do with our patients and how we acquire our outcomes uh, in our clinics with our patients. It's not just about the technique. It's about the environment, your narratives, the terminology that you use. Uh, so those are called top-down influences. What you do with your hands, your magical hands, your amazing magical hands and the techniques that you guys use, those are your bottom-up influences. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we've got about 15 minutes afterwards for some Q&A. You guys got to have amazing questions, uh, and I will have um, maybe some amazing answers. We'll see how it goes. But um, that's everything in an hour. It's a lot of stuff that I'm going to cram in there for you guys. Robert, it sounds really interesting. And again, in the uh, in Australia, there's not too many presenters who are talking in terms of um, a focus on ligaments. So um, it shall be a very interesting presentation indeed for the 60 minutes and of course everyone gets an opportunity to speak to you live through our Q&A system on the platform so it's it's such a great uh, it'll be such a great day and your little section of the day is going to be no doubt um, well received so once again folks at home uh, the topic is ligamentous injuries what you need to know to help your patients with Robert Libby um, so that's on Sunday the 23rd of May 2021 so we're going to see you there. And uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Robert, for letting us know a little bit about your presentation. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in a couple of months' time. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.